your weekly world news on Spring Nectar TV, brought to you by Viva Ramesh, Los Angeles, United States. First, the top headlines. FDA advisors say no to booster shot for most Americans. Travel ban from UK and European Union to be lifted for vaccinated travelers. Australia cancels submarine order. France recalls ambassadors. Brazil president spoke at UN meeting, defied vaccine rules. Wastage of COVID vaccine, World Health Organization ambassador called for immediate action. India out of Germany's high-risk list, COP26 climate talks. Over to news in detail. Discussions on whether a booster shot would be required or not came to a conclusion on Monday when the FDA announced that most Americans would not require a third dose of COVID vaccine. To this effect, a committee of senior advisors chaired by Dr. Arnold Monto was formed to deliberate on the subject. 16 out of the 18 members of the committee voted against the Pfizer vaccine as a booster shot for most Americans. That said, the committee also unanimously agreed that people over the age of 65 and those at high risk should receive a third dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Subsequently, the Pfizer vaccine has been approved for emergency use and study on the booster shots is expected to continue for Pfizer to get full approval. On the other hand, following the success of the first phase of trial of the vaccine on children under 12 years of age, Pfizer and BioNTech announced that the Pfizer vaccine for COVID-19 is safe and efficient for children aged 5 to 11 years. News has it that the FDA will evaluate the results once turned in, and if all goes well, then the approval would come in time for children in the said age group to get their shot by Halloween. Commenting on the progress, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Pfizer, Albert Burla, said in a statement, We are eager to extend the protection afforded by the vaccine to this younger population, subject to regulatory authorization, especially as we track the spread of the Delta variant and the substantial threat it poses to children. Since July, pediatric cases of COVID-19 have risen by about 240% in the United States, underscoring the public health need for vaccination. Meanwhile, the United States is all set to lift the existing travel ban from the United Kingdom and the European Union. News has it that starting November, fully vaccinated travelers from the UK and the 26 Schengen countries in Europe will be allowed to enter the United States without having to quarantine. The only requirement would be that travelers will have to show proof of vaccination and a negative COVID-19 test before boarding. As has always been, the COVID test should have been taken within 72 hours of departure. Lifting of the travel ban will also be extended to India, Brazil, China, Ireland, Iran and South Africa. Welcoming the decision, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson tweeted, It's a fantastic boost for business and trade, and great that family and friends on both sides of the pond can be reunited once again. Moving on to Afghanistan, the now Taliban-conquered country is facing a challenge of sorts, especially girls and women. Despite vouching that they have changed since the last time they ruled Afghanistan and that women will be treated better, the Taliban have banned women from playing sports and now from gaining knowledge. According to the latest news, the Taliban announced the reopening of schools only for boys and have banned secondary education for girls. Although the announcement wasn't directly made, the proclamation made on Friday about the reopening of schools for boys implied that girls would remain at home. This is evident in the statement made by the Taliban Education Ministry as he declared the reopening of schools. All male teachers and students should attend their educational institutions. This has caused a growing concern among the women as they fear the future of their daughters as well as their own. And in France, President Emmanuel Macron requested the ambassadors to the United States and Australia to come back to Paris after Canberra cancelled the order for French-built submarines. The Foreign Minister of France said that this exceptional decision is justified because of the exceptional seriousness of the announcements made on 15 September by Australia and the United States. The cancelling of the $90 billion contract with Naval Group had come as a great disappointment. The move by Australia to acquire U.S. and U.K. nuclear-powered submarines instead is a stab on the back, said Le Drian, especially in the light of the AUKUS security pact. 
He also added that the abandoning of the Ocean Class submarine project that linked Australia and France since 2016 and the announcement of a new partnership with the United States to launch studies on possible future cooperation on nuclear-powered submarines constitute unacceptable behavior between allies and partners, the consequences of which affect the very conception we have of our alliances, our partnerships, and the importance of the Indo-Pacific region for Europe. As the nation stepped up to protest over the loss of the contract, it cancelled a France-UK defence minister's summit, which was scheduled to take place this week. However, on Wednesday, following US President Joe Biden's promise to not sideline Paris from future decisions, France consented to return its ambassador to the United States and meet in October to discuss ways to enhance future consultations. Over to Brazil, President Jair Bolsonaro attended the UN general meeting in New York on Tuesday. Although health authorities had mandated the provision of vaccine proof by all delegates, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres agreed that it was impossible to deny entry to unvaccinated delegates. Bolsonaro, who spoke at the meeting, had flouted all the vaccine rules and publicly announced that he was neither vaccinated nor does he intend to. That makes him the only G20 leader to be unvaccinated as he believes that taking a shot is a personal medical decision. Moving on to India, starting September 19, all restrictions for travelers entering Germany have been lifted. That said, in order to avail quarantine exemption, travelers to Germany will have to show proof, among other documents, of being fully vaccinated with a World Health Organization approved vaccine. This also means that travelers from India no longer need to enroll on any government portal. Meanwhile, India gears up for the 26th session of COP26 summit scheduled to commence on November 1st. To this effect, the country's environment minister, Bhupender Yadav, requested participants from developed countries to view climate finance issues from the three S's angle, namely scope, scale, and speed. With reference to the failure of developed countries to mobilize $100 billion annually towards climate finance, he said that we need to show the urgency of climate finance now in order to address the urgency of climate action, which science is telling us. As many countries have pointed out, those responsible for it take responsibility to help all countries achieve our collective goal. The action on this front, unfortunately, has not been assured for developing countries. On the global front, Former UK Prime Minister and the newly appointed World Health Organization Ambassador for Global Health Financing, Gordon Brown, urged for immediate action to prevent the wastage of COVID vaccine doses. The call was made in view of the 100 million plus doses of vaccine that are due to expire by December. He urged global leaders to share the surplus supplies with the poor countries. The information provided by research group Airfinity has been sent to leaders in the UK, US and Brazil with a request to draw up a plan to distribute the spare doses. In his words, he said, We need a vaccine release plan to provide use now vaccines to prevent a vaccine wastage disaster because use by dates are missed. It is unthinkable and unconscionable that 100 million vaccines will have to be thrown away from the stockpiles of the rich countries, while the populations of the world's poorest countries will pay for our vaccine waste in lives lost. He added that it will be a profound and collective political tragedy if this summit misses the opportunity to act with doses transferred immediately to poorer countries. In this context, U.S. President Joe Biden defined a plan on Wednesday to tackle the pandemic and bridge the vaccination gap. He also announced a donation of an additional 500 million COVID-19 vaccines to low- and middle-income countries. Bringing you the last in this week's report from New Zealand. Auckland finally moved out of Level 4 lockdown after Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern asserted that there was no unknown transmission of the Delta variant in the community. The outbreak caused by the Delta variant had put Auckland in the highest level of lockdown for nearly five weeks. The move was made after taking into account some vital observations, as Jacinda Ardern said, We are not stepping out of Level 4 because the job is done but nor are we moving because we don't think we can achieve the goal of stamping out COVID-19. We are moving because Level 3 still provides a cautious approach 
while we continue to stamp out COVID-19. It means staying in your bubble, it means contactless transactions, and keeping your distance. It means we say thank you to Auckland for their tireless work and we collectively keep going. News has it that Auckland moved into Level 3 setting from Tuesday midnight and will remain in Level 3 for two weeks. With that, we bring you to the end of this week's news bulletin. I'll see you again next week with more world news on Spring Nectar TV. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you.